These deals stand out all over the Amazon marketplace, but how do you get these coveted badges, savings, and deals on your own product listings? Well, there's two key stages, the product launch stage and the growth stage. Optimizing your pricing strategy is one of the most crucial aspects of selling on Amazon, especially during the launch stage. So in this video, I'm gonna show you how to properly price your product for each stage, as well as how to add those badges to your product listings in order to maximize your sales and profit without losing the buy box. All right, let's start with the first stage, the product launch. This is the crucial period when you don't have any sales or reviews. The goal here is to build momentum and generate those all important initial sales and reviews. And because sales is tied very closely to the reviews, not having any reviews when launching a new product can make it tough, but there's a strategy to overcome that hurdle, competitive pricing. First, let's talk about your launch pricing strategy. When you're just starting, it's essential to focus on competitive pricing to overcome the hurdle of low review counts. Research shows that around 30 reviews are often seen as a threshold where customers begin to trust the reliability of a product. This means you need to be willing to sacrifice short-term profitability for long-term gains. And here's what I recommend. Undercut the average market price. Take a look at the top 20 or 30 sellers on the first page of the search results and get an average. If they're selling at an average price of around $20, consider pricing your product at $16. This 20% lower price point will make your listing more appealing to potential customers and help you gather those initial reviews. Another strategy is to sell your product at the break even point. This is the cost to manufacture and ship your product to Amazon plus all of the Amazon fees. But be careful here. If the break even point is too low compared to your competitors' prices, shoppers can perceive your product as low quality. Plus, you're leaving yourself without a buffer to accommodate any marketing or advertising costs such as if you run any PPC campaigns. Now, with that said, another excellent strategy is to offer shoppers incentives to make your product even more irresistible. And there's several ways that you can do this. You can offer a sale price. This is where your listing has a limited time badge and your standard price is crossed out like you can see here. And on the product detail page, it shows the savings in red in both dollars and percentage. And I'll show you exactly how to create this deal to get this badge in a minute. Next, you can offer a coupon. These are displayed as a green discount badge as you can see here. And on the product detail page, customers need to tick a box to redeem the coupon. This is actually a great gimmick since a lot of shoppers will forget to actually tick the box and you end up making a sale at full price. You can create coupons by clicking on the menu, advertising, coupons, create a new coupon. So to create a normal coupon for a percentage or dollar amount discount, choose standard. Or you can create subscribe and save coupons, which I'll go over later on in the video. You can also create reorder coupons for customers that haven't reordered a product from you. But in this case, choose standard. Then choose an audience, select all customers, then copy and paste your product's ASIN here and click search. Checkmark the product to select it and then click continue here at the top. In the first field, choose when you want the coupon to start and end. But take note that same day coupons can take up to six hours to activate as you can see here. Then choose what type of discount that you wanna offer. I like doing percentage discounts, so set it here. Now there's a minimum of 5% and a maximum of 50% like you can see here. And make sure you check mark this option here. Limit redemption to one customer. Otherwise, someone can clear out your entire inventory, especially if you have a huge discount. And I've seen this happen before, so be extra careful. Now set your budget. The minimum is $100. There's a fee for offering coupons, like you can see here. It costs 60 cents per coupon redemption, so by setting a limit, you can set how many coupons you'd like to hand out. Then give your coupon a title. This is what your customers will see on your listing. Then click continue. Review your settings and click on submit. It's that easy. Now a third strategy is adding a strike through price. This is where your price is crossed out with a lower sale price displayed next to it, as you can see here. Now setting a strike through price is a bit more complicated and I'll show you exactly how to set this up in a minute as well. So using these incentives will help you generate initial sales despite not having any reviews or low reviews, such as during a product launch. And you can actually combine these incentives and incorporate some or all of them at the same time. And I'll show you how to do that in a moment. All right, now let's move on to stage two, the sales and profit stage. Once you've built up some sales and reviews and your product has some social proof, now it's time to focus on maximizing your profits. 
This is where you can slowly increase your price to your target price, but there's a specific strategy to doing this in order to maximize your sales and profit as well as not lose the buy box. The key here is to not raise your price too much at once. Raising or lowering the price or making too many frequent price changes in a short period of time can cause you to lose the buy box. This is the buy now button that you see here. And there's also several different ways that you can also lose the buy box. I have a video that goes over this in detail and I'll leave a link to that down in the description below. Now there's a couple ways that you can accomplish this to transition smoothly from the launch stage to the growth stage. Each week, slowly increase the price, either 10% at a time or by one or two dollars at a time, gradually approaching your target price. Alternatively, you can increase the price incrementally based on the reviews. Every 10 positive reviews received, increase the price by 10% or one or two dollars. Basically, choose a strategy that works best based on your sales velocity. But as I mentioned earlier, avoid drastic price jumps to prevent losing the buy box. But don't be afraid to target a price point that's higher than you originally planned or is higher than your competitors. If you've done your homework and you've added value to your product and your product has a real tangible competitive advantage, you can actually command a much higher price. For example, on my very first product, I was able to charge close to $10 more than the previous bestseller because my product was better and solved the unique problem that the shoppers had. So once I reached my original target price, I continued to slowly raise the sale price $2 every week, and to my surprise, the sales remained the same. So I kept raising the price until the sales peaked and began to fall, and that ended up being close to $10 more than I had originally planned, massively increasing my profit margin. And I wouldn't have known this unless I actually tried it. Now, another pricing strategy you can employ is offering a subscribe and save option. This is where buyers can get a deal on your product by subscribing to scheduled weekly or monthly deliveries like you can see here. This can help you secure recurring revenue and improve customer loyalty. But this option is highly dependent on the product that you're selling. Not all products would make sense to buy repeatedly on a regular basis. And don't forget about taking advantage of holidays or special events. During high demand periods like Black Friday, Christmas, or Amazon Prime Day, you can offer deals or you can even raise your prices instead of offering discounts, especially if your product is in high demand. Doing this can significantly boost your profits when demand is at its peak, but you have to be prepared ahead of time to make sure your pricing strategies can take effect during the holiday season or event. Okay, now that you understand these different pricing strategies for each stage of your product launch, let's go over how to set these up in Seller Central. Now, if you navigate to your product listing and click on the Offer tab, you can see a few fields related to the product's pricing like you can see here. The first field is the Your Price field. Now, depending on your product or category, the field names might be slightly different. It might say something like Standard Price instead. Either way, it'll have an asterisk next to it since it's a required field, and if you hover your mouse over the question mark, you can see exactly what it's for. You can see in this case, the Your Price field is the base price of the item. Now, I know that can be confusing. What's the base price? Well, the base price is what you want to sell your product for. This is what the buyer is going to pay, like you can see here. This product has no deals or coupons, so the price that you see here is what the buyer is going to pay. This is the your price or standard price. So if you want to sell your product for, say, $27.97, then enter that price here. Now, if you want to offer your product on sale at a lower price and have the limited time deal badge appear on your listing, like you can see here, you can enter a sale price in the sale price field. So say for example, let's say during the product launch, you can enter the lower price here. This lower price is what the buyer will pay and it's displayed like this on your listing with the limited time deal badge and discount highlighted in red with the original price crossed out. Now by entering a sale price, the sale start date field is now required. So enter the date that you'd like the sale to begin. Also choose the date that you'd like the sale to end. But if you don't want the sale to end, then you can just leave this field blank. Okay, and now down here, you can see a list price field. If we hover over the question mark, you can see that it says, list price is the suggested retail price of a product as provided by a manufacturer, supplier, or seller. This is not the offering or cost price. If you're unable to provide a value, enter zero. Now, if you're doing private label, then you're the manufacturer, so you can make up the list price. Now, in most cases, the list price will be the same as what you've entered in the Your Price field. But here's what we can do two price hacks. 
The first hack is the strike through price. This is where the original price is crossed out and the new lower price is highlighted next to it like you can see here. Notice that this product isn't on sale since it doesn't have the limited time deal badge and it also doesn't have a coupon. But the higher price is crossed out, a strike through, and the lower price is shown here. To show the strike through price, a couple of things need to happen. You need to set the your price field the same or higher than the list price and within the past 90 days made sales at that price. You can see here on the strike through price guidelines, it says Amazon will only display a list price if the product was purchased by customers on Amazon or offered by other retailers at or above the list price in the past 90 days. So if you've done that, then if you leave the list price as is and set the your price lower, then Amazon will show the list price crossed out like you can see in this example. However, there is a second way you can show a strike through price and that's called the typical price like you can see here. Again, notice that this product isn't on sale and doesn't have a coupon, but there's a lower price with the typical price struck out below it. To get this effect, you need to set the your price field lower than the medium price over the last 90 days. Again, if we take a look at the guidelines, it says, the typical price is determined using the 90 day medium price paid by customers for the product on Amazon. The medium price is similar to an average. However, median is the middle value in a set of values when the values are arranged in order from least to greatest. But also take note, the medium price does not include prices paid by customers that included limited time promotions. So a pro tip here, if you want these strike through prices to always show up on your product listings, it's a good idea to keep your list price and the your price high in order to maintain your price history and use limited time deals to offer discounts to your customers. Combining these strategies also has the added benefit of showing more badges on your listings, such as showing a sale price along with a coupon offer and a strike through price all together, like you can see here, creating better visibility and incentives in the search results pages. Now, a huge part of a successful product launch is properly setting up your PPC campaigns and this video right over here will show you exactly how to do that.